All right, now I think I've made sure that the mic is on and hopefully it won't <laughs> get all screwy because I'm so far away. Actually, it looks like I'm pretty close, right? Um, wait, who are you? Who am I? What are we talking about? Hey, I'm Kim. Welcome to the Craft Stash Podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Sunday before tax day in the year of our Lord 2016. That's a really fun way to start the podcast. Um, if you've never seen the show before, welcome aboard. Hopefully you're in for a treat. If you've been here a couple of times with me, hi, good to see you again. I'm gonna try some new things in this show and you let me know how you like it. So, like I said, it's Sunday and I'm recording from home um, in the craft studio office art shop place in my apartment in Denver. It's snowy outside and we've got some really great soft natural light, so I figured I'd try and do another natural light podcast inside. Um, Today I've got lots of what I'm crafting and stashing. Um, A little bit of media. Actually, do I have any media mix? I might not have any media mix today. That's okay, because I've got periphery. Let's get started. So, for what I'm crafting, you might be able to see a nice little spread behind me. Greg and I share an art room slash craft studio, and for the past month and a half, I've been trying to get it organized on my side. What you guys can't see is there's a craft table, um, which my camera's set up on. I've got a really cute little ottoman, um, ottoman, (laughs) roll top desk situation set up. And while they're really, really beautiful looking, they're just not working for me um, in terms of like craft workflow. So that half of the room that you guys can't see right now is kind of up in the air, up in the air, um, trying to figure out a really great situation for me to be able to sit at a desk and work, but then also cut things on that desk and sew things on that desk and make things at that desk. Um, and I think I'm going to end up doing what this smart guy behind me has done and just get like a really awesome antique drafting table because they're so sturdy and you can cut them up and they've got like beautiful wood texture the more that you beat them up. But I don't know why I'm talking to you about that. (laughs) Um, Suffice it to say that my craft mojo is definitely back in a big way um, and I've been using Greg's craft table more than my own, I guess, is the point of that whole, um, the point of that whole like departure of topics. Uh, the first thing that I'm crafting is, for weeks now, you guys have been hearing me talk about all this beautiful fabric that I have, quilting fabric that I got um, in a quilting giveaway, and I hadn't known what to do with it. I finally found some inspiration, and I finally figured it out. I'm going to make what's called a herringbone or a braided strip. They look like this. Um, and it's basically that you lay a bunch of fabric strips um, kind of adjacent to each other and sew them up one at a time. So this was the first one and I sewed this blue guy to this cream guy right over here. Um, And then I sewed this blue guy to this navy guy and you just kind of keep sewing along the long side until you have this beautiful fabric braid. Um, And they're going to become nice long strips and I'm going to, you're basically, if you're a person who really cares about fabric waste with quilting, this might be a tricky one for you to do because um, the easiest way to do it is just cut strips in half. My strips are about seven inches long and two and a half inches wide because that's what the jelly roll comes in. But what happens when you start to actually need to quilt this thing, you have to square it up. So you're gonna lose, you see all these little jagged sides? You're gonna lose a lot of fabric um, as you cut along each side and then obviously cut along the top and the bottom to make a strip. So I don't really care about waste with this one because life's too short and if I were to think about the maximum way to make a quilt block, it wouldn't be something that I liked to look at because they're kind of pretty boring if you're trying to make everything all a square grid. So I'm really excited about the way this quilt is going to look. And if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen me post a photo because the next conundrum that I have to face is what am I going to do in the middle of those braided strips. Luckily, I won this beautiful bundle of fabric. Um, A co-worker of mine started the Denver Highlands Modern Quilt Guild a month ago, and I went to the first meeting, and they have a giveaway every single time, and I, me, who never wins anything in her life ever, I'm looking at you, Mrs. Edwards, with your um, English 
award that you gave to my best friend instead of me. I never win anything <laughs> and I get very bitter about it. So I'm very excited that I finally won something um, that I was excited to win in my life. And I have all these beautiful um, solid fabrics from Robert Kaufman and I was looking at them not to kind of use them all with this quilt because well I think it would be very fun to have like a rainbow in the woods quilt. I don't want a rainbow quilt. Um, I was just using it to see which color looks best. And I think it's going to be, oh, I've got a stalker. <laughs> Someone has just figured out that I'm podcasting. <laughs> it's very creepy because he's looking at me through the window pane. <laughs> um, but anyway, I kind of like the way these fabrics are looking with this apple green color. So I'm going to look for some apple green fabric, um, either in stash or something kind of cheap to buy to make the strips with. So yay for quilting. Um, so that's one thing that I'm crafting. I'm still working on, sorry, I don't mean to talk to you with my back in your face. I'm still working on my messaline sweater. It's going pretty strong. Um, I am just at the part where I'm about to separate for the sleeves. And um, if you know anything about this pattern, it's a pattern by Bristol Ivy. It is made to be worked uh, flat, so back and forth in pieces and then seamed. Um, but I hate seaming sweaters and I don't wear knit sweaters often enough for me to care about the benefits of having seamed sweaters really quickly. The benefit is that um, they just hang on your body a little bit better and they supposedly fit you better. But because I like my sweaters pretty fitted, um, it's not going to be a real benefit. And I really hate seaming and I really hate working back and forth. So long story short, I used a free pattern. I forget the name of it. I'll put it on the bottom as the base, because basically um, the Messaline sweater is a really beautiful but simple sweater that just has cables, um, very intricate cables up the sides. So I'm going to use those cable charts on just a generic sweater pattern. Um, and sorry, I can't remember what the name of the generic sweater pattern is. Um, so that's going pretty well. And I'm holding the yarn double. And there's not much to see because I haven't separated it yet, but I really am liking the way this yarn is looking. It's a little bit more rustic to the feel than I like, but the color is so vibrant that it's making me really happy. Um, and the yarn that I'm using is Cloudborn Fibers in their Highland fingering base, and I'm holding it double. So that's another thing that I'm crafting. Um, I think that's it. Ah, I have one finished object to show you, a very small but fun thing. I recently found out about the, uh oh, I forget the name of it, the Hugh Loco podcast with Nicole. She's a fellow Coloradan. Um, hi, Nicole. Don't know if you watch, but if you do, hi. If you don't, hi, anyway. Um, she has a really great podcast um, called Hugh Loco, and she also has a yarn line that she dyes um, really nice, um, vibrant colored yarns. And I think her claim to fame yarn wise is that she makes these really beautiful tweeted yarns in very bold, vibrant colors. Um, I have a, a, a couple of tweed um, yarns in my stash and it's basically that there are little nips of brown and white here and there and when you knit it up it looks kind of like a tweed jacket. So she does those in really bright fun colors. Um, I saw her stuff at Fancy Tiger and then I found her on Instagram and she's really really sweet. Um, and she has a really great free pattern for a notions pouch so I made one last week. Um, pretty simple you use fat quarters and felt felt paper. What am I saying? Felt paper? A felt, like just felt, I guess, a felt sheet. I can't speak. I don't know what's going on. Use a felt sheet and a fat quarter and you quilt the felt so that you get a really nice sturdy looking um, bag. And then I put makeup in mine because now that I've got short hair, I wear makeup way more often than I used to. Um, and it's just a really fast, easy project considering that I'm someone who's never really done very much with zippers. Pretty straightforward. So that's cool. Um, one last thing, finished object wise that I have, but I am not going to show you tons of it because I'm actually giving it away. I made this really amazing skirt. If you uh, see on my Instagram, if you have seen on my Instagram, I was making a skirt called the Fume Terre, which is a deer and doe pattern. It's a paid pattern. A beautiful long floor sweeping skirt. I like to joke that it's my Jewish Orthodox girl skirt because it, it just covers everything and it fits you like a dream and it looks really regal and rich. Um, and I made one about a week and a half ago um, using black fabric that I got for free and I was considering it my muslin because I didn't know what I was doing and I had never made a long maxi skirt before and I learned a lot about it. The pattern is very um, scarcely written or sparsely written. 
So if you're someone who has done garments before, it's going to work great for you because you're exactly going to know what's going on and um, the relationship of all the different pieces as you're supposed to cut them and seam them and flip them over and sew them inside out and baste them and you'll know what the difference is between edge stitching and base stitching and all that stuff. But if you're a newbie like me, it's kind of hard to decipher those patterns because every step of the way you find yourself or I found myself Googling what to do next because um, I wasn't really sure what the difference between edge stitching and um, there was another kind of stitching we referred to like edge stitching versus base stitching and stuff like that. So. I would recommend the pattern if you know what you're doing, if you've made another garment before. Um, otherwise, it might be a little bit of a frustrating thing because it is not super intuitive as you read through the pattern directions. But it's a beautiful skirt um, and a very well-sized pattern. So <laughs> that's all that I'm crafting. So now we get to move on to the fun part when I'm stashing. So I am stashing a lot, like you see behind me. Um, a lot of this is stash. Um, so I already kind of showed you the Robert Kaufman stuff that I got for free. This is like uh, something like 24 fat quarters. Kind of amazing, kind of intense. Um, so many colors. And I think what I'll end up doing is digging into my fabric stash and looking for a solid fabric that I have like a lot of yardage so that I can do something fun with the rainbow because I love rainbow stuff as you know and there's a ton of really great modern quilt designs that are kind of rainbow based so I kind of want to keep these guys together as a family. The other thing that I'm stashing is more quilt fabric. Um, I work for Craftsy full disclosure if you didn't know that you probably did because I talk about it a lot these days um, and they had a really great sale on quilt kits so I got not one but two quilts designs by Elizabeth Hartman. Um, she's kind of known for her really fun, quirky modern quilts using really bright colors, really kid friendly, but just like also young adult, young at heart friendly. So I got two kits from her. I got Pointy <laughs> and I got Fancy Fox. So Pointy is a really fun pattern that is, ooh, I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll just, I'll just show you the, um, the artsy photo of it. It's basically just a, a, a quilt pattern that features directional arrows. Arrows are crazy hipster, I know, but I think they're really cute. And it's got good yardage for a large size quilt. So the large quilt pattern that she comes up with is 67 by 80. So that's pretty a decent size. Um, and I'm really excited about it because it's rainbows, but it's subtle rainbows. And the cool thing about it is, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but the, the background fabric for this quilt is kind of like a denim, like a gray denim. It's very thick and durable. Um, so it's not just like regular quilting cotton, which I think is going to be uh, a really nice different look that's a little bit more textured, a little bit more rustic, rugged feeling without being kind of just like, I don't know, without being like muslin. So I'm really excited about that. And the other one I got from her is a fancy fox quilt. When I first got into quilting, I was really excited about quilts that were very geometric, but also whimsical and kind of like um, pictorial, but not um, not like super realistic looking. So I really was excited to see that Elizabeth Hartman has a lot of really cute animal designs. And again, they're very kid friendly, but for me, I'm a young at heart. So I'm just excited to make a bunch of foxes. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do the one that has glasses because that seems pretty intense. <laughs> um, but the fabric also is very similar in that it's not like a regular quilting cotton it's kind of this i don't know if this is called chambray maybe it is called chambray once i get better at uh, quilting terms and fabric um, but it's kind of like a woven slightly thicker feel a little bit more rustic um, so i'm excited about those two quilts that i'm stashing Like I said, no media mix this week, as far as I can tell. I don't remember. Oh, maybe I do have a thing for media mix. <laughs> so my birthday is in like two and a half weeks. Um, I'm gonna turn the big three, six, because I can count. Um, and because I'm an adult, that means if I get presents early, I'm allowed to open them early. Greg told me so himself yesterday, so I opened my birthday present from him, which was like really cool, really unexpected. I was playing this guessing game trying to figure out what the hell it was and I had no clue. Apparently moleskin came out with a really um, interesting way to link 
sketchbooks and notebooks to digital notes and it's called the Moleskin uh, Neo Smart Pen. I don't know, maybe that's not the official name of it. But anyway, I got this really cool pen that doesn't look like very much, um, except for you write on this special notes, moleskin notepad, and it basically transfers your sketched notes onto um, like a digital format. And you can email that, you can like annotate it with text, you re can redraw, recolor. And it's something that I've always kind of was waiting to figure out because I've had like an iPad with the 53 paper app that likes to draw as if it was um, draw as if it was like ink um, and I've tried other ways to kind of digitize notes but this is so far the closest way um, and I, you're not gonna see very much so I don't need to show this to you but it was a really cool birthday present and I'm kind of obsessed with it but I don't know what to do with it yet because it's so powerful um, and I didn't know it existed so I'm gonna take a couple of weeks to figure out how it's gonna work into my life. <laughs> um, I used it to try and do some quilt designs yesterday and to kind of figure out my to-do lists and stuff and so far it's good, but I feel like there's something better I could be doing with it. So I guess that's what I have for Media Mix. Thanks to Greg for my birthday present that came early. Yay. I think some other people are sending me birthday presents. Um, my mom and sisters are sending me things. So when those come, I'm gonna open them because honestly, there's no reason to wait till my actual birthday. Right? Um, yeah, so that's Media Mix. Last but not least, I have a little bit of periphery for you. So periphery um, today is all about um, kind of what I talked about earlier, like figuring out what my personal style is and caring more about like the things that I have in my home and like a craft setup that works for me and a closet setup that works for me. Um, it's really nice to have time and space to think about those things where I feel like in my past life I didn't really have time to think about those kinds of things and I didn't really care to. So um, Greg and I have started doing um, that book that I told you guys about on the last podcast, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. So yesterday I condoed all of my clothes, my shoes, my undies, my tights, my winter jackets, my purses, um, my knit hats, my knit scarves, my knit arm warmers, and everything that I put on my body. I put on a f in a big pile on the floor and just sorted through all of them, and it was really, really intense. Um, I cried a couple of times because I ended up giving things away that I thought was like, oh my god, I love this skirt. I made this skirt like literally two weeks ago, but I never wear it, so I need to give it away, and it's not making me happy. It actually gives me agita to see this thing, so um, it was a good experience. Um, the thing that I wanted to tell y'all about is how I kind of figured out what parts of Marie Kondo I was going to do because if you read the book, I listened to the audiobook, if you read the book it's very heavy handed on the whole like, touch everything you own, it gives you joy, it's special, say thank you to it. And that's on the surface fine, I get it, but like to read an entire book of that, it's very tiring, it's very saccharine, it's not my personality type at all, I'm way too cynical for that shit. Um, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't valuable stuff to hear. So I basically went through and highlighted the things in the book that I totally agreed with. Um, the stuff that I totally didn't agree with, I also highlighted so I could remember not to let that seep into my head. Um, and then I did what most people do is I Googled it <laughs> to see what other people had done. And I found this really great checklist um, by a woman who runs a blog slash channel called Lavender. And she the biggest advice that I got from her about the process was to make it feel like a party. Don't try and sort through all of your shit in one category in one day and be like wearing frumpy clothing and have your hair all effed up and like have no music on. Like dress up a little bit, you know, make yourself feel good, put on some fun music, have, have eaten something, be drinking, be, keep hydrated because it's, it's a long, intense thing to pick up everything you own as an American in 2016. Super first world problems, but they exist. Um, it just takes a lot out of you, so making it feel like a fun event is super important to keep you going and make you feel good about it at the end. Um, the other tip that I had was to put things in plastic bags that are not clear, because I put my shit in clear plastic bags and I keep walking by it and I'm just like, oh, but I made that beautiful shawl, I should keep it. And that's not the case, that's not the point at all. Um, so I printed out her checklist, but then I also made my own checklist based on my own rules for myself. And my rules were based, 
Ugh, my rules are basically if um, I had two categories, things that it was okay to keep even if I'm not using them currently because hello, I have a wall of craft supplies that I'm not currently using and I'm not getting rid of that shit. And then stuff that it wasn't okay to keep even if I wasn't using currently. And then from there, I just sorted it into her, into Mary Kondo's regular um, categories. And so far that's working. So I think that's all I've got for you guys for today. Thank you for joining me. Um, let me know what you think. Follow me on Instagram and I'll see you around. In the meantime, if you can't craft it, stash it and condo it. Cheers. <laughs>